Okay, so having downloaded the the 878 software, first thing that we need to do is take a backup of the radio. Best way to first we need to set the port. In my case it's COM5. And then we need to read the data from the radio. So you'll be able to see on the inset. Okay, so we'll read the data from the radio. We don't want to download the digital contact list. This is something you should only download and upload one time, really. But just download the default data. Now, obviously, I've already set mine up, so there's data in here already. There's quite a lot of stuff going on. But what we do is we'll save that. Into a folder. I'm going to date mine, but you should call it something more appropriate. And that's the file saved. The next thing we should do is to update the firmware. Firmware and icon update. You go and get your firmware from the firmware file that you downloaded. It's downloaded as a zip. Once you load it, you'll, it will tell you that if it is the incorrect version, it will inform you. You should write it. I'm not going to. I have already updated mine to be the latest version. That takes several minutes, and at the end of it, it will reboot. You should have it plugged into the charger. You know, it, there should be no way that process could be interrupted by the batteries going because you could trash the radio potentially. So th the next thing that we then need to do is to set up our basic information. A good place to start is this, and it's really complex. There's a lot of things on it. But uh, some of the simple things, you know, what you want to load on the start screen. I've not had any, any, had any luck with uploading a custom picture to it. It would be good if somebody had an answer to that. And also, if you set the power on password, it's great because it means if somebody steals your radio, they can't use it. I've set my different startup channels to VHF repeaters group and GB3NF, which is my local repeater, and my secondary one to VFO from the same group. Actually, that should be in VHF Simplex. That's pretty straightforward. There are a lot of these settings, and it should be pretty rare that you need to do these. You can preset these colors for the different channels, uh, which if I just engage it, you can see I've set mine to yellow and orange, uh, which I find pleasing on the eye. You can set them to whatever you want. You can set how long the backlight stays on, how long the display stays on, how long the menu stays on. By default, it seems to go off after about one second, which I found a little annoying because uh, I wear spectacles. And if I haven't got my spectacles on, I can't see it. I need it to be on for a bit longer. By default, the GPS positioning is turned off. And there's two GPS modes. BDS is only in China. So unless you live in Asia somewhere and you have access to BDS systems, but uh, we don't. And you can set the time code as time zone as well. UTC plus one hour. You can set the limits for the scan frequencies. Now, currently, I'm leaving these open. Obviously, if you're doing that, you need to be careful because you could transmit on frequencies that are not licensed. There are auto repeater settings. And I've set these to the defaults in my area. So some of the UHF repeaters are, have a 9 megahertz spacing. And the VHF ones tend to be 600 kilohertz. Haven't tried this feature yet. Uh, it's part of a feature called roaming, which you can turn on. And when you go to a different area, it will find an available repeater. And again, frequency range settings. I'm not messing with most of this. This radio is so complex that the less you play with it, the more likely it is to work. 
I have reduced the maximum volume. It's really loud on the default of eight. And, you know, if you get an unscratch signal or some QRM, you really don't want it. Work mode is still a bit of a mystery to me, but I've just set those to the defaults that I want. Uh, Vox, I don't use. Uh, it's as simple as that. That's your choice if you want to use it. And then a lot of these settings I have left well alone. The power saving one. If you set it to one to one, it literally spends 50% of its time receiving and 50% of its time in standby. If you set it to two to one, it'll spend twice as long on the air as it does to what's in standby. I have programmed some of these keys. This is entirely personal preference. The PF keys are on the left hand side. PF3 is the green one on the top of the radio. And P1 and P2 are these two on the front. So they're very useful and as you can see you can set them for a short key or a long key. Which doubles the amount of things that you can uh, set those up for. Again, I haven't touched any of this. It does seem to come very well commissioned for the UK. So from the top, the first thing that we really need to set up once we've done those are basic information. Uh, but that is set correctly anyway. I don't think you can change that. First thing I wanted to set up was channels. And my personal preference is to set up the, U the VHF channels first and my local repeaters. So this is going to vary according to where you are in, in the UK or wherever you're watching this video from. Uh, so you need to go to either uh, repeater book or UK repeaters if you're in the UK or the RSGB website and work from there. Now, unlike Baofengs, you can't just click the frequency and change it. When you click it, it brings up a new menu. Now, this allows you to access the full complexity of it because if you look how many columns that are on here, it's amazing. There's just so much information in them. I tried exporting it into a spreadsheet thinking it would be easier to work with. It's not. It's more complicated and there's more chance of messing it up. So as you'd expect, put your channel name in, whatever suits you. And unlike a bow thing, you can have more than a few characters. So I could put the name, an abbreviation of the location. And we've got, we set up the receive and transmit frequencies, which as you can see are 600 kilohertz apart. Remember, if you've not done this before on VHF, it, the transmit frequency is normally lower. On UHF, it's normally higher, but not always, and not always by the same amount. Some UHF repeaters are separated by 1.6 megahertz, which seems to be the convention. And some of my local ones are separated by 9 megahertz, uh, probably due to local frequency use in that area. You can select analog or digital and you can also on dual mode repeat multi-mode repeaters you can set it so it will receive both sorry it will transmit both but receive analog or transmit both with digital first and transmitting digital as the priority again i need to discover more about this it's a an incredibly complex radio and i just want to give you a get started guide there are four power levels, and I have no idea what they are because, again, it's a new radio. The documentation is a bit sketchy. So as time goes on, we should find a lot more out. 12.5k spacing on VHF, two meters, and you can put a busy lock on. I choose not to do that. CTSS codes. Again, you need to check on the repeaters, which frequencies it uses. My local one doesn't require decode one for reception. It's not required for transmitting 77 hertz. Scotch mode is set to carrier. Obviously, if I had that set to CTSS, that should come up as well. 
I choose not to have that because most repeaters don't use it. So if you've got your repeater list handy, instead of having to save each one and click on it, you can just go next. And that's brilliant. It will save it into the sheet below. It does not save it to the local file and it doesn't save it to the radio, but it does save it to the display underneath. So if we go through a few and I go to the VHF ones and I've got a gap there and it's going to put blanks in, which is annoying. I'll have to take those out. So again, here's a UHF one and that's got uh, a 1.6 meg spacing. It's an analog one. We find a digital one. There's actually less to set up. Now I have not tested these yet, but this my understanding is that these are the correct settings. So by selecting digital mode, this is a pure digital repeater. There's no analog FM on it. Uh, and again, this is going to vary from one repeater to another. So I'm always going to permit at the moment. And it's in a, a scan list of UHF repeaters. We'll come back to scan lists later. Because until you've got some frequencies in, you can't even set up a scan list. So it's a good idea to put a handful of frequencies in first. There's a hierarchy in, in the way that you have to do things. But if you do them in the wrong order, you're going to find it difficult. So the settings that you're going to need for a digital uh, channel. I don't know if you can. You can't change that anywhere, I don't think. No, you can't. Now the colour code. And I'm not sure why it's called a colour code, because it doesn't have any colour. And there are two time slots. So check those on each repeater from repeater book or UK repeaters if you're in the UK. And then you, you can enter different receiving groups. Check with your local repeater. So once we've done those, we then end up with these blank ones, which I want to remove because they, they're just unusable channels. So we can save that locally. It does take a few seconds to save. It didn't that time because we haven't really made any changes. But you can see I've got quite a few channels in and I've separated them so I can add additional uh, repeaters in. As we go down, I haven't got that many. If we go down, you'll see I've got the DMR repeaters down here. Sorry, these are the UHF repeaters. I've got a mixture of digital and analog and simplex. There are some simplex DMR repeaters. And if we go down to 100, I then start the, the 100s, I start the DMR repeaters. To me, channel numbers are not particularly important, but I do like to be able to move things around and have them in a, a sort of order where my local repeaters will be at the start of each group. So if you wish to remove move something, you can. You can copy you can copy and paste. Nothing like your email popping up while you're recording. Uh, you can move them up or down, copy and paste one at a time. I think you can also move them as groups. So those are your basic channels. So The next thing we want to do is have a look at scan lists. So the first thing that you would do is set up a scan list. When you set one of these up, if I make new scan list, I can then pick which, using the shift and, if I use the shift key, I can select a group. If I use the control key, I can add extra ones. I can then push those to that list. I can also move the order of them up and down. So if you have a preference for a certain frequency or a certain channel, you could move them up or down as you wish. Absolutely brilliant. Or you can order them by name, if that's your bag, or you can order them by ID. And again, the settings for priority channel and a number of other things that I haven't set up yet. That's absolutely wonderful. 
you can really organize this radio the way that you want and you can have a channel in multiple scan lists if you want so you could have a an everything scan list you could have in my case i've got vhf repeaters uhf repeaters and you'll see there those are all my repeaters quite a few of them and these are simplex channels i haven't put those in i've also labeled the calling channels so there's no confusion over what i'm calling on I've then got simplex channels and again I've marked the calling channels and UHF simplex there are different calling channels and there are also slots for hotspots so if you have a local gateway or a local hotspot those are two preset frequencies that I have got I, again I haven't tested a lot of this stuff yet so it's first impressions now then You'd think that putting them in the scan list would be enough to make it work. Now, I don't know whether it's a software bug or a feature. I wouldn't have wrote this software this way, but that's just me. To get those to actually work, we then have to go into each channel and select a list. That may actually prevent you having it in more than one list. But that's what you've got to do to make it appear in the in the uh, not in the channel list on the front panel and i can go through mine easily using the up and down button so vhf repeaters uhf simplex vhf simplex uhf repeaters and back to vhf repeaters so I only had this radio a day or two i've not even had a, a qso on it yet i wanted to get all this set up I've done some tests on the repeaters and most of them work but I live in a very strange location I'm in a dip and I'm not sure what I can properly access yet so that's the basics of it you can also preset your FM radio channels yes it has a built-in FM radio I actually didn't realize that and you can something to pass the time when you're not in a contact but that's pretty good a lot of this stuff, auto repeater frequencies, again, I've set those up. I have no idea what it does. I assume it scans uh, a base frequency and then perhaps scans either side of it. These ones I have not set. And then when we're complete, So now that's uh, set up the way that we want it, we shall save the file. And if you wanted to save a different version, you, of course, you can do file save as. And as you, I've got several versions there already. Once we're happy with that, we can then go program, write to radio, and it will write it regardless, even though there are no changes. But you mustn't turn the radio off until it's finished on the radio end because it buffers data in the lead, as far as I can tell. Then when it reboots, all should be well. And again, it takes a few seconds to reboot because it's heavily computerized. <laughs> 